What's going on guys, Carmine here, and welcome to another Game of Thrones theory video, where I go into several theories about characters and events in the series, and try to shed some light on them. This time we'll be focusing on secret Targaryens, characters who may or may not be related to the Targaryen family. For those of you who have been with my channel for a fairly long time, you guys know that I've never been a big fan of theory videos, however many of you have requested I do a couple of them, and I'm choosing this topic because I do find it fairly interesting, and quite possible. More so than Ned Stark being related to Luke Skywalker. Now, before I begin, uh, full disclosure, these theories were not created by me. It was made by several members of the online community, and I am merely going to be explaining them, breaking them down, and giving my, you my personal opinion. Same with my previous theory videos as well. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. The first candidate for Targaryen lineage is Tyrion Lannister. Many of you who have only seen the television show may be confused about this one, but those of you who have read the novels know it all too well. While Peter Dinklage plays an amazing Tyrion, he is actually fairly good looking and it's a bit weird to see him and then go back and read about him in the novels because George does paint Tyrion as an ugly looking demon monkey. This theory is solely relied on the fact that Aerys Targaryen II, also known as the Mad King, raped Tywin's wife Joanna and the result was Tyrion. If this was true, it would explain his appearance. For example, in the books, he has pale blonde hair, which some would argue is a trait that combines both Lannister and Targaryen hair colors, and his eyes are mismatched, one of them being green while the other one is black. This could be a result of mixed blood, which he probably would not have if Tywin was his father. Many readers point to this, as well as Tywin's disdain for Tyrion, as proof that he may be the Mad King's son. Tywin has also said before that he cannot prove Tyrion is his son, which led some people to believe that Tywin has suspected the Mad King's involvement in Tyrion's birth for quite a long time. Some of you are wondering, why would the Mad King rape Tywin's wife? Well, it mainly comes back to jealousy and fear. Tywin was handed the king to Ares for a fairly long time, and while he was the hand of the king, Everything in the realm ran so smoothly and everybody was content. Some people said that it was Tywin that actually ran the Seven Kingdoms, which made Ares upset. Tywin has also proven himself an amazing battle commander multiple times, most notably the Rain Rebellion. As a result of this fear and jealousy, Ares would often criticize Tywin for minor things, and he would, loudly, talk about his wife and how it was a shame the First Knight's tradition was no longer the law, which is basically whenever a peasant would marry, his lord would get to sleep with the wife on the first night of marriage. Same with nobles and kings. So yes, you could say Ares did find Tywin's wife Joanna very attractive, and he would also make insults to Tywin's children, most notably Cersei, as well as making his son, Jaime, the Kingsguard. While it may be an honor to serve in the Kingsguard, Tywin would technically be robbed of his heir, since Kingsguard cannot hold lands or titles. So yeah, he did take it as an insult, and Ares basically talked shit whenever he had a chance. All that being said, could you really blame Tywin for suspecting that Tyrion may not be his son? Some say it's slight paranoia, but I kind of believe Tywin has a reason to question many things. You're probably wondering if Joanna was raped by the Mad King, why didn't she say anything? Well, you could argue that maybe she didn't want to tell Tywin just yet for fear that he would go to war with the Crown, or maybe she'd hope to sweep it under the rug and pray that the child would be Tywin's instead. Who knows, but it is a fun theory to think about that maybe Tyrion is Danny's brother and he may be the third head of the dragon. Another possible Targaryen is Peter Baelish, and this one struck me as odd, but it does make sense in its own way. Peter's family originally came from Bravos, and maybe, just maybe, his family were part of House Blackfire. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Blackfires, they're an offshoot of the Targaryen family. I'll go into more detail about them in another video later on, but the theory here is that the Blackfires, after their failed rebellion against the Targaryens, fled across the Narrow Sea to Essos and had children with the people from the Free Cities. After several decades, Peter's family moved to Westeros, and eventually, Peter uncovered the truth about his family line early on, and sought to climb the political ladder in the Seven Kingdoms. That way, he could someday take over, and not by force, like the previous Blackfires tried to do. Sometimes, the pact of victory requires less bloodshed and more patience. Now, this theory, while a bit crazy, would be a nice twist and explain a lot of things. And yes, even though the Blackfires aren't technically in the Targaryen house, they do have that blood. Who's to say that one of their members didn't sleep with some random whore, and that was Peter's great-great-great-grandmother or something? Maybe that Valyrian steel dagger that Peter has is actually a family heirloom passed down to him by the Blackfires. It would also explain why Peter may hate Varys so much, who, as we all know, is a Targaryen supporter. Personally, Peter is one of my favorite characters, and I would love to see his reaction and even interactions with uh, Daenerys Targaryen, or even Jon Snow for that matter. 
Now the last secret Targaryen is a bit of a stretch, but once you start aligning the pieces, it starts to make a bit more sense. Now I'm warning you, this is going to be insane, but stick with me for the long run. The theory here is that Mance Raider is actually Rhaegar Targaryen. Now I know this one sounds insanely stupid, but hear me out. The theory here is that after the Battle of the Trident, Rhaegar is carried off by some of his most loyal soldiers and he recovers in an undisclosed location. After several weeks, he discovers that his house has been destroyed and that his remaining family has fled across the Narrow Sea. In order to keep the lineage alive, he decides to go into hiding and travels north where he joins the Night's Watch under a new name. He realizes that there is no other house that would support his claim unless he had many warriors backing him, so he decides to unite the Wildlings to his false cause of bypassing the wall for safety. With Varys feeding him information, he is able to keep tabs on current events in the Seven Kingdoms, which would make sense as to why Mance Raider would decide to move when the country was in the midst of a civil war. Eventually, Rhaegar realizes that there is another threat beyond the wall and tries to get his people across so they can reveal his identity and unite the people under the Targaryen banner against the White Walkers. You gotta admit, as far-fetched as this sounds, it is pretty cool in a way, but once again, it's kind of insane. And there is no major evidence to prove this other than his love for music. Mance Raider is known to be a very talented musician, and in the books, it is revealed that Mance climbed the wall and snuck into Winterfell disguised as a bard. Do you guys remember that welcoming party in Season 1, Episode 1? Remember that feast where Cersei and Catelyn are sitting next to each other and whatnot? Well, apparently Mance Raider was at that party. That, that's not a theory, that's, that's in the books. He says this, that he was at the party. And uh, the funny thing is, Mance starts singing a song about a man that steals the Northmen's daughter. Hmm. It would also make sense as to why Mance Raider let Jon Snow live when Jon supposedly defected to join his group. I mean, y you could say that maybe Mance knew that Jon was his son all along, or maybe it was just coincidental that Mance just happened to let this one Night's Watch guy live, despite, you know, knowing that it could be a trap or it could be a lie. Overall, these theories, while a bit crazy, do have some merit to them and are certainly interesting. My favorite being Peter Baelish being a Blackfire. But at the same time, anybody can argue that Ned Stark is also a Skywalker or something, so there you go. If you're wondering why I didn't mention Jon Snow or the fake Aegon, well, those are too obvious and I've already covered them in previous videos. I wanted to dish out something that you guys may not have heard too much about. If you enjoy the video and like to see more theory videos, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and let me know your thoughts about these theories and what you would like to see next. Thanks for watching, have a good one.